Hey everyone, welcome to the eighth and last lecture of this AWS Guard Duty series. And in this lecture, I just want to introduce the concept of IDS and IPS because we have seen through entire series, we worked on detecting the system. We worked on remediating the issues, right? Which comes under the IPS part. And I covered a conceptual part of an IPS, which is AWS network firewall within AWS. It's similar to that, a network based IPS and AWS guard duty is more of a detection system, intrusion detection system or intelligent threat detection system that what AWS is calling it as, but it is more of a cloud centric ideas. So, you know, since we are talking about security stuff, we are talking about detecting, preventing, right? So you need to understand a concept of an IDS and IPS, why AWS implemented guard duty, security hub, network firewall or other security services in order to protect your system. So everything evolves around the concept of IDS and IPS. So that's why I just wanted to introduce the concept. I'm not going into the detail of an IDS or IPS. It's a huge topic. So it's better you just try to understand and focus on AWS services over this particular series. Now IDS is more of a intrusion detection system. One of the important factor within IDS is detection, right? It is just detecting the threats and sending you the data, the finding, Hey, at this system, this threat is happening. A malware attack is happened on this system or I am credential got compromised. So it is detecting more of a detection system. That's what AWS guard duty is all about. Now intrusion detection system is a device or a software application that monitors your network systems for malicious activity or policy violation. So it's the same scenario, whatever we had done in our entire series of guard duty. So guard duty, you can consider it's a service from AWS, which works on the machine learning logic in the backend continuously keep monitoring our uh, VPC flow log from the network side, then cloud trail from the account activity, then DNS log for the route 53 activity. So continuously monitoring and sending us the report. So any kind of policy violation is going to happen, then IDS will help you to detect that intrusion and any intrusion activity. Now what intrusion is just, try to understand intrusion is more of a unauthorized activity, which is happening to your environment. Any kind of a violation is typically reported to an administrator collected centrally using the SIM tool. So SIM tool is basically a security information and event management system. It's a combination of information system and event management system. So I showed in one of the lab that we can do a multi account management with AWS guard duty, which means, and even uh, with the security hub, you can follow the same concept. If you are a part of AWS organization, then what we can do, we can have an administrator account an administrator guard duty account, which will collect all the data of your 50, 100, 10, 2, whatever the number of accounts you're running within our organization, you can send all those data into one administrator account. But uh, in a ideal world of a production based scenarios, we use same tool like Splunk. You might have heard about Splunk or Datadog or Sumo logic. These are the famous, uh, you know, SIM tool that we use for collecting the data at a centralized place. And that makes the life of an administrator easy for analyzing and taking the action based upon the threat that we are getting it. Now, two of the important, uh, I would say, the ideas that I have worked with is network based ideas and host based ideas. So network based ideas is more towards, you know, analyzing the logs of your network, or you can see the account activity as well, whatever we are doing on the account basis, scan it, dump all the data into the finding section. And based on that, you can do the remediation action. Host based ideas, again, uh, one of an example of host based ideas is malware scan from AWS guard duty. 
So you can use uh, AWS malware scan uh, from the guard duty, which will scan, keep scanning your uh, EC2 volumes or EBS volume. And if it detects any kind of a threat, then it will stop that server, take the snapshot and retain it for certain duration, whichever you have defined. So that's more of a host based ideas. Uh, we have a certain uh, agent based because when we say host base, it has to be uh, agent installed on the system. AWS guard duty malware scan is not an agent based because once you enable it, it will start scanning your uh, EBS volumes or EC2 instances based upon the activity which is happening into your environment. One of the host base ideas is lacework, I would say. Now, how basically uh, this one, the IDS works so IDS works on different type of uh, uh, algorithm, right? One is a signature based where it looks for a specific pattern. As an example, byte sequence on the network traffic. So if it find out any, any malicious activity, then it will help you to detect that particular threat and send the data to the same tool. Second one is the behavior or we, we call it as anomaly based as well, where it uh, works on the explosion of malware. So if there is attack of uh, explosion of malware, then it will help you to detect that system as well. And one is, uh, which is a reputation based where basically suspicious activity on the file level at the file level, basically. So that's what IDS in general is all about. We will take a look at the flow in the next uh, slide. Before that IPS, it's more of a prevention system. So IDS is detecting it and IPS is preventing it like more of a reactive approach, right? Uh, if any attack is happening, just block it from the network level, from the host level, or there's a DDoS attack, right? So if there is uh, something happening to the environment, just block that particular state to protect the infrastructure. So IPS, as the name suggests, is a security device that with the main task to preventing the network intrusions, right? Uh, that's why IPS is connected in line to the packet flow. Uh, what does this mean? I will show you in the next slide. From the network topology firewall with IPS, the IPS device is usually connected behind the firewall, but in line with the communication path, which transmit the packet to and from, from the internal network. Now, I have seen, I have not worked with all the IPS system, but network base I have worked with. NBA is more towards your DDoS attack. Host base I have worked with, I haven't worked with NBA, the behavior analysis and the wireless uh, based IPS. So just if somebody asks you, hey, uh, what is AWS guard duty? So AWS guard duty is more of a cloud centric ideas. What is AWS network firewall? It is more of a network IPS prevention system because we have, uh, I haven't showed you how network firewall works, but I'm planning to roll out another series on network firewall, a dedicated one for network firewall that will cover up the com better concept, like deeper concept, I would say not a better one, a deeper concept because in this entire series, I just covered the concept of network firewall, but in our, uh, f uh, like the series that will come for network firewall, I will show you a few of the practical demo as well, because these are the shortest series that I am creating that will help you to understand the cloud networking part, the cloud network security part, basically. Now, this is the flow chart. I would say on the left hand side, we have a detection system on the right hand side, we have a prevention system. Now, if you, if you just try to understand attacker, which is a malicious instance coming from the internet, crossing the firewall, crossing the switch into the corporate LAN, right? So they gain the access to this instance, what I showed you on all the labs. Now, let's say if we have an IDS, right? IDS present uh, in this entire system, then what IDS will do? It will not protect, like not prevent the attack, but it will take all the findings. For example, a malware attack or your IAM credential got compromised or your system got compromised, right? So it will take all the data and dump to a management system, which is SIM basically, Splunk or Datadog, Sumo Logic, Microsoft Sentinel. So like a lot of tool present in the market over here, but that's what IDS is doing, taking all the data and dump those finding, if it is malicious, 
if it is a high a high priority issue or a critical finding or a low priority finding and send those data to management system now one of the important part over here is ibs is not implemented in flow of the network okay so it is more towards like uh, uh, usually inserted in a tap or a span port mirroring device to monitor your entire traffic so it's not impacting the flow that is coming to the system on the other side which is an ips the same scenario we implement ips behind firewall what it's doing so for example if there is an attack coming right then what ips will do if it is a botnet traffic or if it is a ddos traffic again ddos if with a you know the normal ips the network based ips it will not stop the ddos attack it will reduce the attack of ddos but it will not entirely stop the ddos attack so in that case you have to use uh, nba the network behavioral analysis so ips will uh, you know help in blocking the suspicious ip address or uh, any botnet traffic or any malware attack coming from the system so network firewall i covered one of the concept where you can stop the traffic uh, going outbound if it if somebody is trying to you know download some file and if it is a malware file then ips will help to stop that particular download and block that traffic ips has also functionality to send all the data to the sim tool like splunk and sumo logic right which one to use ids or ips so one of the drawback that what i have seen with ips it comes with a lot of false positive which means if you are having a legit traffic legitimate traffic then it might block that traffic as well and that might impact your environment so in order to implement ips you have to be very careful in creating a rule that will block particular attack right you cannot block all the legit tra legitimate traffic basically right so more more of a I, I, ids is always there because uh, we can uh, get all the findings and based on our analysis we can take the remediation action like my instance is compromised if it is contacting to the malicious ip address then it's better to stop that that's a, that's a more custom ips prevention system right but if you go for a core ips system implementation then in that case uh, you have to be very careful in blocking the traffic obviously if you have the list of malicious ip address you can block those ip address with the help of ips yes uh, then in that case the outbound or the inbound network flow will not be going to happen with the malicious ip address so that's what i wanted to cover up i hope this clears a lot in terms of the concept of ips ids and why aws guard duty is there why we are implementing lambda function or systems manager or obviously there is a manual remediation process so if you are using ids then yes you can detect and with the custom function you can prevent those issues as well Thank you guys for this particular entire aws guard duty series i hope this was quite helpful for you to understand the cloud security within aws and if you are heavily aws centric workload company then it's better to use a cloud native tool guard duty is one of a good ids that will help you to find out the issues and based on that you can write a custom function to remediate it as per the requirement so do more practical try to create more scenarios and in interact with different services try to understand guard duty d in a deeper way i have given you the entire concept we have covered entire uh, you know certain kind of production based scenarios so yes if you're facing any issue place out a comment in comment section I'll be there to help you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.